Second. Okay, we're going to start. Uh, all right. This is Ty. I'm with Slater and Alec of Indico. Hello. Um, all right, before we start this, I want to uh, reassure that the judges have not slipped you any of the questions in advance. You have no, no idea no. what questions are going to be. I hereby confirm that I do not know what is okay. being asked of us. Question number one is biblical. Who should get the biblical question? I, Alec, I might um, embarrass myself because I'm a little rusty. But I, can, I can be the and, friend, and, the and, friend and, and why should you get the biblical question? Uh, high school. I think I'm like technically a year towards being a Catholic priest. Something along those lines. All right. A lot of theology. Well, here's, right. here's a question you need to open it. How does open this work? It. Yeah, just open it and answer the question. Ooh, excellent. And actually, I've get, you've, we started really easy on you here. We read it aloud. You gotta read it aloud. Oh, okay. Oh, it, in the beginning of the King James edition of the Bible, what was the first phrase? Hence, six words. In the beginning, there was light. Or no, God, no. King James edition. In the beginning was the was the word. Was the word. Oh, so shit. give us. Oh, you oh, give me a hint on the. Oh wow, well, this is. Well, there's okay. only one word left. In the beginning. All right. So uh, the question. The question is: the word is indico. Give us the Genesis story. <laughs> Of how you came up with the name. Oh, oh okay. Oh, I love that. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I, well, this is a combo. Yeah, We're yeah. gonna tell about that. Okay. So, um, so back when we first like formed this company, we realized that the first thing that we had to figure out was was a name. Um, so we went through you know 20, 30 different names. We're like oh, typing okay. Swahili <laughs> words and difficult translate, trying to see what they are. Like, yeah, you know, like if we do. Terrible. Freedom in Japanese and data in Swahili <laughs> and like cram the words together. What will happen? Um, and then we're like, okay, clearly we're no good at coming up with yes. names. What are we good at? Machine learning. Um, so we went and we scraped the top couple thousand companies on Yahoo. It was Finance. actually a click a download a CSV. <sighs> I, I like to so much. <laughs> um, and then and then we weighted the letter transitions by market cap and came up with statistically speaking the most successful possible name. And it said Indico. Now, Indico with a little I. Yes, with a little I. Doesn't that important. mean that you're a captive of the of the past? You know, of the past trends? Not at all. It means we're welcoming and we don't put ourselves up on a pedestal. Okay. Just Indico is for and of the, the people. past. All right, Alec uh, took this one. I am going to give the next one then. Uh, I'm going to give this one to Slater, though I know okay. Slater, you're going to actually be dumping that one on Alex. Oh, are okay. you sure? So are the, you sure? The, well, maybe not. Who knows? All right. So artistic photographic as I balance the coffee. Um, okay. I can take this for you. Oh, thank it's you. Work. All right. How can you fragment or reassemble a lol cat to look like a Picasso painting? Okay. Well, actually, so there's a spectacular library on GitHub made by some some developer that goes by the name New Moo. Oh God. No, um, known as Stylize. Oh, actually, God. actually, I happen to know that New Moo's cat Iggy is currently is currently the the front page of this GitHub repository. Mm. Um, yeah. Though I, I I don't know. I don't know who this New Moo character is, but I think I know how to do this. I think I know how to do this. Though. Yeah. So how, how, how do you do it? Do it? So. Recursive partitioning of the input space. So you've treated as regression problem. Actually, this is uh, by a guy named uh, Andrew Carpathy. So a few years ago on like the internet, there was like this big trend to do like genetic algorithm, random like tweaking to make like the Mona Lisa from a bunch of polygons. And so you just like take a bunch of polygons, see them, and you'd like change the vertices, move it a little left, right, measure how much closer. If it got closer to the image, you'd keep it. If not, you'd delete it. And these algorithms could like hey, you could get a pretty good looking Mona Lisa. Oh, so just iterative, 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 closer, 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 just try and over and over again. It would take two or three Brute days, force. like oh, up to a week to run these things. So the problem is, is that's like cool, but there's no way you're actually going to be able to do that. And like you know, when someone wants an image, just like to have it. So like there's this guy Andrew Carpathy, he's actually Stanford. Uh, yeah. no, no, that's uh, fine. Google. He's not the NLP uh, department. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Uh, and he uh, he like kind of had this one post about how you use neural networks to do this, where you're like treating the image as like what you're trying to create. So you just treat it as a regression problem, or given the pixels of the image, predict the color of every given pixel. And you get this really cool like kind of painterly stylization. But if you use red and forest or you know just in tree regressors, you get this nice like Picasso esque splitting if you use the right. So so if I were to ask you for a picture in the show notes, you might be able to help me on this. We put this on the web. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We have a we have a live question thing. number three. Fictional engineering. Ooh, later. Excellent. Right. Oh, I'm excited. Okay. I, I am a fictional engineer. Or something. Uh, always. All right. Oh, uh, spectacular. So, okay. Describe <laughs> how Spider-Man can swing in mathematical terms. Uh, can he achieve perpetual motion? So the, the short answer is no. Um, slightly longer answer is when I, I, I have a paper on this. Actually, I'm not sure if you were aware, <laughs> Ty. Um, oh, hold on. There's, there's a whole bonus. Okay. Oh, well, so let me let me start with this, this. question first. Um, 
So, so the truth of the matter is that Spider-Man cannot achieve perpetual motion, sadly, unless he's going around corners. So basically, I, I did this project back in the day for my first and last ever physics class, which was advanced classical mechanics. They figured, you know, get it all done in one go. Um, and they said, you know, come up with some project at the end. And so it turns out you can you can model Spider-Man as an elastic pendulum, sort of web-slinging through the streets of a... No spherical cow? No spherical cow. Uh, Spider-Man actually is a point mass. Oh, okay. Uh, spherical cows are a little, little advanced for yeah. Spider-Man. Uh, but no, so it turns out there are like certain strategies for swinging that Spider-Man can adopt, depending on whether he wants to move forward very quickly while losing speed. Um, so basically, like, what you have to assume is, like, when Spider-Man shoots out the web, it's already sort of, like, pre-stretched. Um, and then he, like, basically, like, goes towards each web. He cannot achieve perpetual motion, but he can actually go several kilometers. Oh, did you ever see the, the thing with the balls and the strings where you can sort of zing it? What's that? What's yeah, the principle? Yeah. I forget. You know, when you sort of, it's like, almost like a yo-yo, you can get these and whipping around. I don't oh, have uh, Yeah, I've played, I have one of those. Right. Should, should, really I, should I go? Right. Oh, question okay. number two. Bonus question. Bonus yeah. question. Okay. What Boston life science entrepreneur slash investor has hatched a half dozen successful companies and has never backed a loser startup? I'm not actually sure. I I'll give you a hint. His son works for Spark Capital. Let's see. So I know a couple of people from Spark. Okay. Bijan. Most, most recent partner. Tall Andrew. Andrew. Okay, I met Andrew. I know him. I don't know his last name. It's Andrew Parker. What's his father's name? Peter Parker. It's, it's Peter, Peter Parker. It's, it's, oh, Peter oh, oh, it's spectacular. All right. Oh my goodness. Oh, God. That's All right. We have a choice yeah. between source and sorcery, historic, poetic, or mathematic cinematic. Oh, I'm gonna leave Alec up to this one. I, I've taken the last two. Uh, so source and sorcery. I source think. and sorcery. Yeah, there it is. Right. All right. All right. What's good? What's this one gonna be? What's cooler? Oh, this is oh, cool. Oh, no, okay. no, no. no, here. Magic the Gathering or Magic the Gathering Online Exchange. So, Magic the Gathering, point blank, without a doubt, because it's it's extremely fun. I, I don't know if anyone saw it. There's a picture of us way back in the day. We played what may have been the highest stakes Magic the Gathering game of all time. Um, this was just with Aaron? This Yeah, this is yeah. with, with Aaron. You know, the... the, the Details it was that a, it's, a, it's a three million dollar game, I believe. No, oh, with a hundred million dollar cap. <laughs> um, um, so I would certainly say Magic Gathering. There's just nothing that really beats sort of the tactile feeling of the cards in your hands. And yeah, so actually, about two feet away from here, we played a game with a with a local VC, Aaron White. Uh, Ezra, actually, one of our interns. Destroy him. him. Yep. He actually destroyed he paid his internship off. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That's, that's why it's we keep him around. He's yeah. excellent to Magic the Gathering. But, but Aaron is much better at, at Hearthstone. Aaron, however, would know a lot more about Magic the Gathering online exchange. Yes, he absolutely, absolutely and would. And wh what that is? Uh, what that is? I mean, like just online versions of card games in general. Aaron Magic, what are the initials? Magic the Gathering online exchange spell. M T G O E. O X. From oh, X. Ma uh, Mount Cox. Mount Cox, the Bitcoin failed exchange. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes oh, absolutely. It started as a Magic the Gathering thing. Yeah, okay. you know, I, I, I bought Bitcoin way back in the day when they were when they were eight bucks a piece. Yeah. I, I won on the first bus and I lost on the second. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go for... Um, I'm going to go for a tough one here. I'm giving okay, you exactly. historic poetic. Ooh, historic I love it. poetic. Oh gosh. Yeah. This, doesn't this feel like quiz? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was a history major and really? a poetry minor. Oh, that's excellent. In college, I, my, know. I know that shocks you because you thought I was just a computer science. Just a PhD. finance yeah. computer science yeah. guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Which All right. person first wrote about the possibilities of a program? Ada Lovelace, of course. Ada Lovelace. I don't yeah. know. Ada like, Lovelace. Ada Lovelace. First, first, you, first you know her daughter, Linda Lovelace. No, I don't know. Okay, anyway, go ahead. Okay, yeah, no, Ada Lovelace, back in the day, like, first came up with the concept of the string. She was, I think she was dating Charles Babbage back in the day. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, that would be great, yeah, yeah. Um, It was Babbage's calculator, but yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think they, I think there was some kind of romantic relationship there. And why, what's the poetic connection? Ada Lovelace. Her father was Lord Byron. Oh, who oh, was, right. That who was, was the who died, who died, who died in a war of a disease. Who, who was known as a uh, philanderer, and her <laughs> mother wanted movie. her far from poetry. So, and so she good. went to mathematics. It's a but, good, good distance. But That's she still got the, the creative juices going. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Um, Mathematic, cinematic. All right. All right. Let's, uh, see, let's see what happens here. Okay. Uh, I do like math. All right. 
Oh, I see. What is it? What is an Erdős Bacon number? Uh, why is it? The, why is the world's lowest Erdős Bacon number number three, but is going to two? Okay, so an Erdős Bacon number is the maximum of uh, the maximum number of the sum. The sum. The sum. Oh, ooh. This, okay. well, first of all, what's an Erdős and what's a Bacon? Right. So an Erdős number. Uh, so Erdős was an extremely prolific mathematician. I believe the most prolific mathematician of all times. He would basically walk into math departments and they say, "Oh, you know, we've been really struggling with this problem for a long time." You sort of sit there, sort of think about it for like 10, 15 minutes and be like, well, if you thought about it like this, then be like, you know, and inevitably it would be the answer. Um, and so he ended up being sort of co-authors on just hundreds and hundreds of papers. Um, and it just built up to this point where everyone wanted to know, you know, how far away from Erdos are you? You know, this extremely prolific person. So if you co-authored a paper with Erdos, your number is one. If you co-authored a paper with someone who co-authored a paper with Erdos, your number is two. Uh, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, Bacon number is similar, but with acting in some kind of film. I don't believe, is it limited to movies, Todd? No, no, it's the seven degrees of Kevin Bacon. Right, okay, yeah, just some uh, commercials, any anything of the sort. Um, the world's lowest, okay, so I believe I remember why it's going to two. I don't know why it's, I mean, presumably the reason it is three is because someone... Someone has an Erdős number of one, one and a Bacon number of two. Yes. Um, and the reason they'd be going to two is presumably because, because that person's going to act with Kevin Bacon in a movie. And I'm backing that project on Kickstarter. Spectacular, oh. spectacular, spectacular. Okay. Yes. Uh, and the okay. final, the final question. All right. This is, Ooh, this is exciting. One. No, this is you both get to answer this right. one. Okay. Let's let's open it up. Who would each of you rather be, Steve or Waz, and why? Oh, uh, this is. This one hits hits oh, right, God, right, God, right, God, right, 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 right. Go, go for it, Alec. Um, unfortunately, I don't know actually too much about Apple history. Oh, Slater's a big Apple fan, awkward. but I'm not. I'm not so I, I want to. Oh, back. I'm sorry. I'm not man. a fan. I did read the, like 800 page biography. Yeah. yeah. I can't. I kind of am a fan. <laughs> yeah. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Uh, was well, seems like my guy. My dad gave me my like helped me build my first computer when I was five. So it's like always. That kind no, of Steve thing. was very technical, yeah. even though people don't think of him that. Well, way. but that's like I'm so okay. Cool. So the weirdest thing is like I think I would also still like Walls, but for a very different reason, yeah. which is that okay. So now I'm going to show some of my true Apple okay. colors. Um, when when Apple first went public, uh, a lot of the people that Steve brought on in the early days, including someone whose name I'm forgetting, but basically let him stay on his farm for a long time at Apple Farms, which is where they eventually got the name for the company. Um, his name was like Dylan K. I forget his last name. Came to Steve and was like, oh, yep, we went public, great, you know, now now what happens? Um, because Steve had sort of always promised he would take care of him. And Steve said, well, no, that's that's kind of like your deal. So, like, Steve didn't have, like, a lot of sort of friendship loyalty. But then what Waz did is Waz went to, like, every single person that, like, Steve had kind of, like, promised shares to and said, don't worry, I will give you my shares. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so Waz went and took care of, like, all these friends, and that's something that I, you know, really do admire. But later Steve, early Steve, I don't want to be. I think he was too too off the walls. Later Steve, when he really sort of like got things together, he started being like a much better, like, he, I don't know, real real family man, which I guess sounds weird coming from me. So well, early Steve, early Waz, late Steve. I don't think of it, I think whether you're a technical guy or a business guy, everybody would rather be Waz now. Because uh, Waz is still alive. Right? I, that, that, oh. that is fair. Oh, okay. But I mean, at least Steve doesn't have to deal with uh, being Waz. You know, being being kind of you know the Buzz Aldrin of Apple. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. All right, thank you guys. Exactly. Mysterious random people who will be watching this. Yes. <laughs>